What is up you guys, and of course welcome back to another team planner which is truly Descarinder. And we went up against uh, Arkansas Race Wins this week. Week two of course, so as you guys see there, take that away. Just to get the sound the feeling here. Uh, quite frankly, this is a team I had a rough time planning for. Um, this team is, as you guys can see on the screen clearly, with a lot of Zapdos, Landers Incarnate, Sanford's only, of course, Scissor, Rose Raid, Vaporeon, Comfe, Hitmolee, Palisander, Rapidash, and a Mega Tyranitar. Now, here's the thing Mega Tyranitar could very well run through my team depending on the set, so I have to have two Pokemon at least to kind of, the, well, make that work. Now, as you guys can see already on the right side, that's the party I'm bringing. I'm gonna go over why I bring the mods I do, and I'm also gonna mention which Pokemon that may or may not make it. Uh, I feel since the last game went as it did that I lost quite heavily that I want to debate uh, What can go wrong and why certain Pokemon makes it over the other it doesn't mean that it's a bad choice But it means that we have a situation that I had to kind of Justify why we want to bring these six which is we get 11 Pokemon There are a lot of plannings involved and there will be mistakes Always and that's good to have in mind um, as you guys can see as the team are, I really, 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 while I have bring Scissor here, Scissor do not have a nice time here. The thing is here, my Scissor beats his Scissor, so it's an anti-check to that and also means a Comfy can't be as effective because I have three Pokemon weak to Fairy spamming, so Comfy is kind of nasty here. While Running Kiss isn't a strong move, if that thing gets set up at least once with Calm Mind, things are going to hurt. So having Scissor there kind of forces him to run Hidden Power Fire um, and we're gonna be somewhat defensive to not be easily KO'd by a Comfy I've at least invested in a way that a plus two with Life Orb Hidden Power Fire from Comfy shouldn't KO me from full that is With Stealth Rock, Scans get kind of shaggy but as a Stealth Rocker, as you guys can see on the field, there's, there's Pelosan, which I feel is definitely gonna make it to check uh, Thunders and then we have what is that? I do believe Landers in Kana, which I feel is unlikely, though I am very scared of a rock polish set to get with Calm Mind, since you come up quite far away here with uh, a combination of Hidden Power, um, Hidden Power with Flying and Ground. That actually is something that, uh, um, if you take actually my Thunders out of the way, it's a set that will work very well towards me, and it could even run Hidden Power Ice and Ground. It will be just kind of fine here actually for one Calm Mind. That said though, go over my team. I feel like I wasted more time than I should already. So we're gonna minimize this. Um, I do think you guys wanna at least have the team in sight. Um, so we're gonna make that as low quality as we can. That looks great. So first and foremost, Greninja. Uh, this is a rather standard set here. We are timid and with enough investment to outspeed his speed threat, which is Latios. We couldn't go modest here, which is unfortunate. So it means we actually got a lot of HP here and some special defense. We can actually survive uh, Draco here, which is kind of cool. That's why we have 12 in that special defense. That is, of course, if it isn't a life or variant of the Laddie, which I feel is unlikely. Um, this spread here is very simple, and the attack status here is very simple too. Heart Pump, Dark Pulse, Ice Beam, and Spikes. The thing is here, while it does have a lot of defogging, which is why I actually not bring a Stealth Frog for this game, because it's really unnecessary, even though Zapdos is heavily crippled by that. But spikes do ensure Scissor's um, stamina. It also means that Palosan actually get a lot of residual damage towards that. So I feel that he wants to get his Rock Subs himself. That means that I can pressure that place if I so desire. Uh, I don't see Hazard being an effective thing to have here. But if it goes for a more defensive game, that's going to be an option in case I can force some switches which I do believe both Scissor, Conkeldra, and Funders do naturally. It all depends on view first turn, actually. Um, next Pokemon here, we have a Tauros. Uh, a na naive one at that. And um, it's pretty standard here. It actually is um, speed time with Latios. So it's a risk because Draco here will annihilate Tauros if it wins that speed time. But we have very, very simple moves here. Uh, we have Body Slam, which hits him very, very hard. The thing that it doesn't hit very hard are still being able to be hit super effectively. Uh, Iron Head is here only for Comfy. While it does hit Mega Tyranitar, which is fine, uh, it's mainly there for Comfy because I do can bait that matchup. 
Uh, Fire Blast is of course to KO Scissor, and Ice Beam is to deal with Prelosan, which, depending on the set here, Prelosan could be either def heavily defensive or special offensive. Uh, if it is special offensive, then Ice Beam will do around 25%, which means that um, um, the Pokemon that's going to deal with Prelosan is going to become Kelder. Or if the Ice Beam does around uh, 35 to 40, uh, that means Thunderous actually can knock that Pokemon out fairly, fairly easy. So it all depends on how he has built his team here, and Tauros could be very, very good here. Uh, his his strongest threats are actually threatened by Tauros, because Ice Beam also KOs Landorus, and I'll speed everything in his team here, even though I will lose to a defensive Zapdos here. That's, I was debating having Rock Slide, but Body Slam just does so much to Vaporeon, it does around 40% if it is defensive, and that means that we need to deal with that, because Wish Support is something that he does have, and if I can bait and force the switches with spikes, it could very well be two it KO'd on the switch in here if I have spikes up. So yeah, it's an option and that's why Bodyslam has to be there. Tauros is not important though in any aspect, but it is more effective than my remaining mons. Most like last time, Tauros is barely counting it here for the matchup, but though this time I think it's a lot more effective. Um, this time we actually have a Yasha Berry variant of... Uh, um, Saigard, yeah, said that perfectly. Um, a few speed investments here are actually just gonna outspeed it, um, Jolly Tyranitar, um, before it goes for Dragon Dance. It also means that if it tries to set up against me, I can actually catch up with one Dragon Dance. We have a Yasha Berry to be able to survive a hit, uh, Ice Punch or a Ice Beam for Latios. Uh, and also, after one Dragon Dance, we are faster than a standard Latios. Of course, we are. Um, outside of that, very offensive. I really didn't mind the defensive aspect, though I did have some heavy defense, physical defense, in active towards me. Um, the only reason for me to having that is because I'd rather, like, an Ice Beam I will survive, but a Dragon Dance boost Tranitar, that will hurt. So I mean, as defensive as possible, because I think if that Pokemon comes, it's gonna be very likely for me uh, to face that and it will try to win a matchup that I can design wise actually go over. Uh, I don't have superpower though, it's unnecessary at plus one. Uh, Thousand Arrows should do around 80 to 100%. It's around that ballpark depending on the set. Extreme Speed here is mainly for a Scarf Latios if it comes to that. And Outrage is Outrage. If Comfy is dealt with, then Outrage should do what it does best. Uh, should be said though, a draining kiss area of comfy is very annoying for this Pokemon. Um, though a combination of Thousand Arrows and Extreme Speed will KO that. But yeah, two draining kisses should be enough to KO a Saigard actually, depending on what set it is. So um, yeah, not looking forward to that. And when I'm not gonna carry R until this match, it, there is just no way. There is no way I will do that with Scissor on my hand. Now, this is a very, very cut and dry standard Scissor with a lot of special defense. It's the special defense. We have Sword Stance in case that's needed. But on that, um, it actually is to win the match versus a regular Scissor, which, unless it has superpower, really can't deal in, in damage towards me. And I'll always hit him harder. And um, his main response there should be superpower if he uses that set. But I feel Scissor is unlikely, yet it's a very effective mod against my team. So, um, yeah, nothing really to it. This Pokemon is mainly here actually to check um his own sister but also of course i mean vaporin is an aspect here which we are faster than and i can set up versus pelosan which strongest move should be earth power and bullet punch eventually will do a significant amount of damage and especially defensive enough to um actually be able to set up towards that when earth power doing at best around 30 percent though special defense drop is an aspect and that's something we're going to keep in mind of course um yeah that's basically it um, my two remaining Pokemon here are the Pokemon that's gonna be the game change of this matchup because they are doing well here. Uh, first and foremost, Thunderous. Thunderous is a Pokemon I think, depending on what it brings, could sweep my opponent rather easily. Um, it's a very, very strong response to, um, uh, what do you call it, to his Palosand. Um, if it is a defensive Palosand, a physical defensive, Hidden Power Ice with an expert belt should be able to KO it effortlessly after plus two. And most of the mons die at plus two here. There is barely no switching. Latios, depending on the set, is actually also KO'd by an Hidden Power at plus two. So, 
Yeah, I mean, the only way he's going to be able to KO this Pokemon is with a Scarfer. And even at that, if I'm setting up, I'm going all out. Uh, we also have superpower to be able to ensure a KO on the Tyranitar. Thing is here, Focus Blast is not only risky, uh, with the special defense boost, I'm putting myself at risk here because it actually are able to survive that Focus Blast. Superpower, however, is not as easy. And um, as you guys saw on the screen, we are actually un a naive nature here. So we're able to get that small boost so hidden power or i mean super power is enough to guarantee a ko even if it is a impish set so we are fine here thunderous is gonna be great i didn't bring it last game and i feel still i still have a bulk ninja and thunder should have brought should, i should have brought them last game and just for obvious reason they do hurt they're hard to switch into and even if you have a dedicated switch in they will still be effective and um, i felt like i ruined that uh, last Pokemon, the Conk. The Conk Elder is tremendous in this game. And not only because it does negate um, Tyranitar for functioning properly, but also there is really nothing hurting it. Uh, we're gonna have an Assault Vest variant this time too, and that is because we do bait uh, burns from uh, Skull from Vaporeon, and um, that's gonna be no problem. Assault Vest to ensure us to survive comfy, effortlessly, even a plus one. Um, Scissor can't do anything unless it has Sword Stance or Curse. Zapdos does at best around what is the stab move should do around 30%. D yeah, there is really nothing threatening Conkeldor easily here. A Psy Shock should do roughly 60%, and a Psychic from a modest Ladio should push me from the 60% area. Uh, but, but really, there is, shouldn't be any issue here. I should be able to keep this Pokemon. Hopefully rather healthy. We are super special defensive this time around, though yet with our HP because we need all the power we can get. The thing is here, Conk Elder will most likely um, force switches, uh, which means that I rather hit something harder and switch in and then let my opponent decide if it want to sack something or if it can wiggle that around a bit. The risk I'm taking with this is that a certain matchup won't work at all. And that's gonna be versus roll straight, which can be super effective here. And also landers will be very, very, very capable with a sea fly to take me out. So those are two things that will sting. And um, I'm gonna rely heavily on Thunderous. If, if it brings Lando, Fundy needs to be healthy. But if Lando's not there, then Fundy should only be sweeping. And um, of course, Conkeller should only be attacking. Um, Overall though, I feel the matchup is alright. Like I said, there are a few Pokemon that didn't make it, that was on the screen that I was considering. Um, one here was actually Dianchi with a Barberry Berry, Moveless Toxic, Hidden Power, Fire and Stealth Rocks. Uh, though, like I said, I feel uh, it's unlikely that Scissor makes it, and if that if that happened, that means that Dianchi is only a switch into uh, uh, Zapdos, which I don't believe I have any trouble dealing with. The other set here was an Assault Vest variant of Mesprit with Hidden Power, Fire, uh, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and U-Turn. There's a Pokemon that I think is very, very good versus this team, just that Tauros has such a good speed benchmark that I eventually decided to bring the other. Uh, last Pokemon that barely made it was um, this thing, Cryogonal. Um, this set was rather standard, very, very, very defensive, but I, in the end of the day, I didn't need any special defensive wall to deal with fun uh, with the uh, either Latios or um, Zapdos, so I decided that yeah, fuck it, I don't need it. Um, so those were three months. Mesprit, like I said, was barely cutting it dry here. I think Mesprit would have been a tremendous Pokemon for this matchup. Um, it was speed enough to outspeed Tyranitar um, because he can get Pursuit Trap after all, and then hit very, very, very hard. Because uh, this Pokemon is actually capable of doing that, because 105 special attack is actually not that bad. Um, but yeah, I think the team I'm bringing are the strongest here. Um, no matter the matchup I'm gonna go up against, I am gonna lead with Conkildur, and I'm gonna. F I'm pretty sure Palasan is gonna be his main mon against me, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna try my very best to negate Rock as early as po possible and do the damage, because I think his Palasan is gone. Toro should be able to deal well with the most of the matchup here, very, very, very well. Uh, and of course, as stated, I think the Pokemon is going to bait that matchup to be able to deal with Palisand. It's going to be either Conkeldur or um, uh, Thunderous. Both of them are able to deal with it rather well. 
and uh, yeah, it should work. Uh, and if it doesn't, I'm clearly gonna lose. That is, that is always me. Uh, like I said, Pokemon off here, Landers can be very effective towards me. Confi Validate setup can ruin me. And uh, special mention to Rapidash, actually. I do believe a C bounce would be tremendously awful for me to deal with. I don't believe any Pokemon outside of Greninja can deal with the Rapidash that well. So have that in mind. I do believe that set would have been nasty versus me. Just looking at it straight on. Think about it. Flare Blitz, Hidden Power Ice, Wild Charge, and Sea Bounce. Yeah, that, that covers about right everything. We'll, we'll see what happens. I can probably say the most I'm, I'm I think gonna make a guarantee is absolutely Laddie, Sapdos. Uh, Rose Raid, Vaporeon. I think they are in Palisand. They are definitely gonna make it. And then is either Comfy, um, Comfy and Sapdos, I feel, are the other ones that are up in the air. And if my opponent is very risky, he's gonna bring Rapidash. And then I'm gonna decide whether or not I'm dumb or if my opponent is a pure genius out of that option alone. I'll see what I decide when it happens. Anyway, thank you for, of course, for watching, guys. I'm recording this on Monday. I'm going to do Battle of Wizards Thursday. So, I'm being pretty early here. If I do any changes, I'm going to actually implement that in the video. Oh, I feel it's very unlikely. I think my team are on point this time. So, anyway, with that said, guys, thank you for, of course, for watching, as always. And I'll see you, or no, clearly, transpires in the next segment. Take care, guys. So, right. Yes. We actually are doing this post com and I actually did a live narration of this battle, but I do want to see how the video itself is doing post narrated. Plus, I can share a few thoughts of the matchup itself and how I feel about it, and of course, how I was thinking throughout the game. Uh, because I do realize that a live com can be quite silent sometimes, and at least like this, we are at least uh, saying everything in face value. So, first and foremost, I'm really going to say that the matchup here was close to what I was expecting, while Palisand, Zapdos, and Lati made it, and even Comfy, uh, with use of Vaporeon here, and Rapidash. I think the Rapidash was the one that really was feeling that. If it brings that, it's gonna be scary, because that's nothing I'm prepping for, at the same time that the speed tier is actually quite tough to force me dealing with, and I really don't have a natural switch in if it has hidden power ice. Um, so yeah, I didn't feel that was particularly interesting. Um, and I got really stressed out. One thing I did kind of realize, though, however, is that Comfy is possibly his only defogger. Uh, and since I didn't bother with Stealth Rock this game because of his massive um, creation of a lot of defoggers, I decided to kind of go at it as offensive as possible, as already stated. So uh, I feel that Palosan or Sapto is going to be his lead Pokemon, and Gongelder is going to be very, very, very right for this matchup. So we're going to send off with that, and then we're going to basically see if we can disrupt the team as much as possible because that's basically my game idea uh not giving a defensive momentum whatsoever just keep on hitting and hopefully that works and i mean that in every aspect because i really palisand and Sapdos are very very tough for me to dealing with and they really are just con that are dedicated to force them out naturally so that said let's go into the match so from get go here we do get a very very strong lead as palisand was the Pokemon is gonna, he decided to lead off with. And my natural player is gonna go for knockoff or ice beam, though, or ice beam, ice punch. Uh, but ice punch is the way I wanna go. Basically, I kind of feel that Sapdos is a possible entry, and um, even Vaporeon, which is a threat towards World Conkelder. So we actually switch into this Comfy, which I was surprised, but it's gonna show me that it's a very defensive Comfy. But we also get to freeze here, which, quite frankly, here, it's very, very unfortunate. And uh, we do see also, of course, it's leftover, not life orb, so it, Comfy isn't necessarily all big of a threat. Now, I will actually switch into my Scissor, uh, mainly because I don't want to risk a Draining Kiss. He does luckily actually fought out first turn here, and uh, goes directly for Draining Kiss. Now, he could have possibly predicted me, so he got in a part of fire, but he wouldn't know whether or not he was going to fought out, so I feel that it disrupted him a little bit. Uh, however, though, uh, my opponent here is going to switch out and it's going to go to Skyfall, which is the Sapto. So I'm going to do a, uh, actually a um, full-on out switch out to Torizion on my Tauros. Because it feels natural, he's going to switch out. Now, I'm going to go for Hidden Power Ice just to kind of gauge if he's defensive or the switch in here is defensive, or I mean special defensive. And Ice Beam here will showcase it of roughly 30-35%, which means that this is a physical defensive 
Palace and it's not the special defense I wanted, which I was fearing. So it also means I can send in my funders, uh, since I'm predicting the cell price come up and I can easily go for a nasty plot and then from there uh, one it KO actually Pelosan unless it has Yasha Berry, which it doesn't of course have his already showcase leftovers and we clear of course already used an ice beam on him. So the rest of our nasty plot and um, Fundy all of a sudden in theory can sweep this team from here on out. Um, so there's a self rock, there's nothing to it. I mean, like I said, not necessarily weak to self rock, and the one being weak are on the field. So we go for the power ice, and we're gonna knock out the castle black already. Um, which is huge because that means that Swords already or just can spam body slams on everything at this point. As uh, so he's gonna send in the lazy boy, gun directly for a uh, draining kiss. Now, I'll be honest here, it is unfortunate that I also have agility, uh, but I also kind of felt that since it Decided to bring this one and not Lottie, that Lottie has a possibility of not being Scarfed, and if so, I have a good chance of one killing that Pokemon also with a Hidden Power Ice Suit from Expert Bolt. So, we're gonna get ourselves around 50%, and we're gonna knock out the Comfy, and we're looking strong here. Fundy really is showcasing why it is such a threat, even in Generation 7. But here it comes to Lottie, and the thing is here, if it's Scarfed, that's fine. Um, which it actually will showcase to be, and we're gonna lose Fundy to this. But the thing is here, if it's locked into Ice Beam, I can either go to Scizor, or I can go to my uh, Conkeldor. Now the thing is here, Conkeldor is very viable switching in here, it's very safe for me of doing so. So, I'm sending in that, and I'm gonna go directly for, I believe, a knockoff here. Um, the reason for this is because I know it's locked into that, I can easily just go for damage. And, uh, like I said here before, I do not fear Saptos. We're gonna see Expert Belt, which means that, yeah, it, this is a sweeping variant of uh, Saptos. But that's not a Saptos that can go toe to toe with uh, Conkeldra. I will lose damage here. But the thing is, there's Ice Beam does around one third, e roughly one third. Uh, and that is actually with um, him, of course, losing the flying type with Roost. So I'll actually just keep on attacking. The thing is, here, I cannot bait out, I guess, Vaporeon by keep doing this. I'm actually gonna go for a combination here with Nagov. Uh, the thing is here, if it doesn't decide to roost, uh, my combination of Ice Beam and Mag Punch will guarantee KO. So I lose nothing by staying in and just keep on attacking here, and I clearly have a lot more attacks than he can against me. So eventually my opponent here is gonna go for the Thunderbolt. It does roughly 50% that we're gonna KO the Zapdos because that's what can kill her do. It kills stuff and it does that quite right. Uh, now he's gonna send in Maximus here. And I had no idea, this could be a C-Bounce variant, I was kind of thinking, you know, what what could this possibly be? And I felt, you know, my most defensive Pokemon here is Psygod, whatever it is, I can probably switch that in and gauge where not has hidden power ice. Uh, but, but it's gonna be a Fire MC Rapidash, which is good, because it means that it isn't Scarf, which is, well, that, that's, that, that's great, but it also means that uh, he's not gonna be a lifer variant or anything like that. Um, I was kind of fearing for the life 4 plus hidden power ice that would have been guaranteeing KOing. And well, now I'm pretty sure it isn't that. Uh, and actually, the, 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 I'll say this it, it does a fair amount of damage towards me. Now, I am theory sacking my Saigon here basically to gauge where not it has hidden power at this point. Taurus look, it might define really. And uh, I'm gonna go directly for a thousand arrows, and that does a lot to the Laudios. And uh, the thing is here, he's gonna be one gutsy man going off and go for hidden power of fire. So I'm actually gonna send in Fulgore, my sister, and uh, I'm gonna do the classic U-turn play. Since we know where Scarf is locked into Ice Beam, I'm, I have no problem whatsoever uh, go directly for a U-turn here, knowing that Vaporeon or Raptor is gonna be his switch in as uh, we get the Holy Sister, the Vaporeon, and um, well, I mean. We, we are in that position we kind of were looking for, where I can send in Conkeldur again. And the thing is here, Conkeldur wants to be burned. Since I'm a Soul's Vest, I kind of was hoping that Vaporeon will provide the burn. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to send in Gohan, and I'm going to go hope for a burn. Well, I'll, I'll be honest here, we do get the Skull, which is kind of nice. Actually, we don't get that yet. Or do we? Hmm. Yeah, we get the Skull. But we don't get the burn. However, the Drain Punch will still do a significant amount of damage. And not only will I be able to, of course, survive uh, another Skull, I'll definitely take him out <laughs> as a following turn. 
So yeah, Vaporeon is not looking strong there. He's definitely not a check towards Wolf and Gelder. Basically nothing on his team is at this point. But my opponent will surprise me and go, actually go for a switch out here. And JB Westside will go to his Rapidash and... Um, well... That, that's not gonna swing well, and Conkeldor will get a lot of HP back, and I am actually in range where I can survive a Psy Shock or Psychic from Latios, which is awesome, because we not only do we take out actually Maximus here, uh, we are actually very able to, of course, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Latios, and my opponent here will have Psychic, not Psy Shock, which wouldn't necessarily have matter anyway, and we will survive because we are in that nasty cool range. We just get a good roll here, but like I said, we were in a safe area from there on out. And we got to knock out Lodio, so his remaining Pokemon is Vaporeon. Uh, the thing is here, I don't want to put myself in a spot where he starts wishing and stuff like that. So I decided to sack Conkeldur here. And I guess you said luckily there because I actually met, went for a Mac Punch. Thinking about it, that would have been better to go for a Drain Punch if you gone for a Wish. Because at least then I would guarantee KO. So it was kind of a risky play. Uh, even though I had Pokemon to deal with Vaporeon, Vaporeon is still very, very tough to take out. So, we're gonna win this 4-0, and that's in Tauros. Basically, I do want Tauros to get a kill, even though it didn't necessarily matter. This was basically Conkeldur's and Thunder's game, and uh, they really, really did the wall breaking here, and uh, we get a really safe win, I would say, against the Yabby West South and our Kansas Absolts. So before you guys do anything else here, and before I talk about the after thoughts about the game itself, do check out here my opponent here, Gibby West Side. Um, because he's a really, really cool content creator. Definitely enjoyed his last week game, even though he didn't win. And the same thing here, of course, lose two times in a row. And I get that. It's tough. You really want to win for your team because you do not somewhere down the line, no want the confirmation you're doing something right. I do believe starting the season with a loss and then keep getting a loss have you fluster like you're getting frustrated for all the wrong reasons and but i can understand why because you kind of want that momentum for your team and yeah it's just annoying and this is one of those things like i got the matchup i needed to be able to win this conk elder was a lot more effective than it should have been and has a lot to do with that landers wasn't active in this game um and that's the thing like there are so many plausibilities on how i want to cover things Latios all of a sudden was probably the only Pokemon that could uh, do a significant amount of damage towards, of course, Conkeldur. But it needed me with a down, which I wasn't to an extent, but Latios didn't switch in well. And that's basically the game. Like, I don't know how much the freeze itself matters, but it does take, of course, a little bit of disruption uh, when that happened. Because all of a sudden you don't predict, you can just go for obvious plays, hoping for the fall out, and I got an easy switch into Scissor. And got a momentum out of that. Um, the thing is here, I gotta say though, Tauros, I think it did a lot of work, well work here. It definitely gauged Pelissan in a way I didn't expect it to do. And Fundy, of course, paved the way rather early. Um, I was really surprised this was in conflict with four Lodios. Uh, then again, had he switched in Lodios directly, I would have preserved Thunderous. Uh, I'm definitely gonna state that. But at that point, I had no reason predicting that it was Scarf, and even if it was, I would still be in a good spot just because Conkeldur came in for free, which, well, that was annoying for my opponent. And every time Conkeldur came in, something really did kind of die here, didn't it? It was a hard Pokemon to switch into, and it didn't have Pokemon to switch in well to Conkeldur. And that actually was a part with my previous opponent, Vipsis, but I preserved Conkeldur much worse in that game. Here, it got to shine a little bit, and it did a showcase why it is a threat in a league concept. It's very hard to deal with on face value, and I... I, I clearly appreciate that, but at the same time, yeah, I'm gonna say to my opponent here that, you know, don't let this loss really be affecting you throughout the matchup or the season itself. You have something great going on here, it just needs to find that great prediction and great momentum. I really believe Palisan and Zapdos are very good defensive cores here with Aporeon, I think it's very hard to predict around that. I had a slow Pokemon that dealt with them fairly well. But I'm very aware of that not only every team here has that option, so don't worry, you, you'll find your way and I'm pretty sure we're going to see you in playoff because there is really no hassle stack against this team. It's surprisingly effective here. Like I said, very unfortunately we don't see Landers. I think that Pokemon would have been decisive, uh, but at the same time, you know, I get a win, which is great. I definitely, I needed that myself, of course, since I lost my first week, so I feel even strongly for Yibi Westside because I definitely feel... 
he lost because the prediction about the matchup was wrong. That's basically it, and I hate winning like that because I had an easier game due to that. It was an ideal matchup, but he probably predicted other Pokemons, and I pretty much predicted the monster was going to be affected towards me. And that's how League works, and it sometimes can be frustrating to uh, deal with in face value. Uh, so that's it guys, thank you for watching. Like I said, make sure to check out my opponent here at Gary Westside. Great channel, great content creator. And uh, well, I'll see you guys next week when we're going up against Blaze. Oof, this is gonna be a sticky game. That's, that's gonna be a tough game, if anything. Uh, so that's it guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next week. Till then, take care.